In the early 1930s, a remote farmhouse located in the western region of the Isle of Man became the centre of an enduring enigma, courtesy of an unexpected and peculiar guest. To navigate this tale, we first must look into the life and family of Jim Irving. Jim Irving, once a travelling salesman, chose to embark on a farming venture and settled at Dawlish Casson, which was named Cashin's Gap as well, in Dolby on the western side of the Isle of Man, along with his wife Margaret and their daughter Vori. Life was challenging in their secluded abode, devoid of modern amenities like electricity and running water, and their farm struggled to thrive. In 1931, an extraordinary visitor suddenly made its presence known. Strange scratching sounds emanating from behind the wooden panels of the house were tracked back to none other than a mongoose. There was no clear reason as to why a mongoose was found in a British isle, but one theory proposed that the neighbouring farmer introduced mongooses to control the rabbit population back in 1912. However, this was no ordinary mongoose. Initially elusive, it developed an attachment to Vori, who was the 13-year-old daughter of Jim Irving at the time, and it remarkably began to mimic human speech. Soon enough, the mongoose, who introduced itself as Geth, claimed to be an exceptionally intelligent creature born in Delhi, India, on June the 7th, 1852. Geth quickly grasped English and even dabbled in other languages and songs. His personality ranged from playful and affectionate to disruptive and impolite. He earned his keep by catching rabbits and would venture into neighbouring farms to eavesdrop on their affairs. Geth was even known to enjoy bus rides around the island, returning with the latest gossip from fellow passengers. His preferred hiding spot was an above boxed in partition in Vori's bedroom, maintaining a particularly close bond with the young girl. While he also communicated with Jim, his relationship with Mrs. Irving was somewhat cooler. News of Jeff's existence reached the local newspapers and they covered the case with a somewhat playful tone. A local reporter, Jay Radcliffe, visited the farm and concluded that the voice attributed to Geff was in fact Vori's. Undeterred, Jim Irving pursued the matter further and sought the assistance of English ghost hunter Harry Price by writing him a letter. Price, initially occupied, sent his friend Captain James MacDonald to investigate on his behalf. However, MacDonald had no sightings and failed to confirm the voice he had heard belonged to Geff. A sample of fur supposedly left by Geff, when analysed, turned out to belong to a dog, specifically Vori's sheepdog named Mona. Finally, in July 1935, Price himself arrived on the Isle of Man, accompanied by Richard Lambert, the editor of the BBC magazine The Listener. Unfortunately, much of the Irving's dismay, Geff did not reveal himself to either men. He only resurfaced after they had left. Jim Irving sent Price paw and tooth prints of Geff impressed into plasticine, which were forwarded to the British National History Museum for examination. The museum reported that one print matched a dog's and another might have belonged to a North American raccoon, but none of them matched that of a mongoose. Price and Lambert collaborated on a book titled The Haunting of Cashin's Gap, which neither confirmed nor fully debunked the Irving's claims. After all of this, the final investigation was undertaken by Hungarian journalist Nandor Fedor. He was also a research officer for the International Institute for Psychical Research. Basically, they look at ghosts. Although Fedor left Dawlish Kassen without a sighting of Geth himself, he refrained from ever stating that the mongoose did not exist. Initially considering Geth to be a poltergeist, a product of conflicts within the subconscious mind, Fedor eventually found it difficult to reach a definitive conclusion whether or not Geth was real or just a figment of the Irving's imagination. That was until later life where he concluded that he believed that Geth was a split personality from Jim, but was also both an animal and, yeah, yeah, he was, it was a bit wacky. What was Geth exactly? A poltergeist or a spirit? A product of Vori Irving's vivid imagination? 
a some sort of fraud or scam produced by Jim Irving and the Irving family, or was he just exactly what he claimed to be, a talking mongoose? The mystery remains unsolved, I guess. The Irvings left the Isle of Man in 1937 for the UK, and the farm, Dawlish Casson, the place where they lived, was taken over by a farmer named Graham. In 1947, this man Graham supposedly caught and killed an unusual animal that did not fit the description of a stout weasel or ferret. Some believe that this was Geth. That's right, Geth the talking mongoose was just killed by a random guy. Eventually, the farmhouse and farm fell into disuse and was demolished. So that was it. The last time anyone had supposedly spoken to Geth was prior to the Irvings leaving the island, and if this farmer Graham's story is to be believed, Geth was now murdered and maybe even eaten. The end. However, there is an epilogue to this story. In 1970, Fate, a paranormal magazine, conducted an interview with Vori Irving, who was tracked down by journalist Walter McGraw. She was hesitant to discuss the episode that caused such an upheave in her and her family's lives, but she maintained her conviction that Geth had indeed existed. It was not a lie, it was not a fabrication, he was real, and he was her friend. And that is the legend of Geth, the talking mongoose. Wow, that was a really random video, wasn't it? <laughs> you might be wondering why the hell I did a video just like that, and it really has just something to do with, I, I really like to talk about kind of my culture, my um, heritage, the myths that I grew up with, and this was, you know, one of them that I was consistently told as, as a child, because of course I was, uh, if you didn't know, born and raised in the Isle of Man. Um, yeah, Geth is just a really interesting uh, story to me, I think it's it's really interesting. If you want to know what my personal opinion is of what Geth was, obviously Geth wasn't real. I think Geth was probably a part of Vori's imagination, and maybe she was clever enough to even convince and like gaslight her parents into, you know, them believing it was real, and then somehow did it with all the investigators too. I kind I kind of like that theory. I think it's really interesting. <laughs> Uh, the other reason why I really wanted to produce this video is it's always been my kind of dream to make a film on this kind of event, but I, uh, I recently found out that there's a film called Nador Fedor and the Talking Mongoose, which is coming out starring Simon Pegg and Christopher Lloyd and Neil Gaiman, so I was like, ah, damn, <laughs> someone's beat me to it, which is fair, fair enough, it's to be expected. Um, yeah, so I, I, I really wanted to kind of give my own sort of video on Geth and... Uh, Spread the word about Geth, because I think Geth is a as a beautiful is a beautiful figure in 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 history <laughs> and in folklore. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.